Hello and welcome to uh, Kamikirai video. This is the first video I've done for YouTube in a while. And today we're going to fold Boronoi cells. This is the third take I've done with this thing. So we're gonna fold these called Boronoi cells. A very interesting mathematical object. And the method we're gonna be using to approach them, actually the backside is also quite interesting with all the mountains there and the valleys. All valleys right now because there are no counterpoint to these. So this, is the, this was with, uh, done in the last take. This was done for a workshop I held in the weekend and yeah so several things let's see if we can get this one yeah and so yeah let's just get started with it well this is the new studio space so this is me this is the kitchen and let's see now Alrighty. so first thing you got to do for this boronoi cell exercise is simply mark points around your piece of paper so i'm going to just put in 13 points at random so i'm going to start right there one two three four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen, lucky number thirteen, yeah? All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply fold points to their neighbors. Now you could do this, you know, any way you wanna do it, but that's pretty much sort of the, the setup and that's the development, that's the end game, that's everything. So pretty much just connect them. I, I, I kind of go at random, but you know, you can also picture like, all right, you can focus on a point and be like, this is the point I'm gonna focus on. So it's gonna be there. And then this one's gonna be here. I'm gonna try and not move the paper around so much. For the last takes, that was some, something that I noticed that I was going all over the place. Now here, now there. And also on the last one, the keyboard was visible and that just, that don't fly. So yeah, so we got like our, our first cell pretty much and now we're gonna connect these two. And we're gonna see one of the more interesting aspects of this, of this thing, which is when we're sort of, it's also, it's also like a characteristic of the Boronoi cells, pretty much that we have that intersection as you can see there. And those kinds of intersections are actually gonna be popping up all over. And that's a very beautiful, a very interesting thing. And we're gonna see different configurations and, and sort of relationships come about, but pretty much is happening. So yeah, as you can see, I am rotating the paper a bit. It's just simpler for me to just have it be facing myself and then just go like, whoop, and there. Now I might go a little fast here, but you're not copying me. You're sort of following the algorithm. You're, you're looking at your piece of paper and you're sort of matching the points. That's all you need to do. If you want to see me do it, then, then yeah, that's fine. But, but it's, uh, it's about what you're doing. So the, I, what I like about this is that it's so free form. It's so free form, it's just like put points on a piece of paper. And so, you know, it's a great little exercise for kids. That's, that's sort of like the main thing for, you know, if, you, if you're a teacher, if you're into visual mathematics, and you want to teach people about the Boronoi cells, this is a great little, little exercise for that precise, um, you know, end game, end game situation. There we go. Now there, here, another connection. So we see those intersections are key in letting us know that we're on the right path. It ain't always easy to see sort of which ones we're missing or which ones are, are correct. But you know, the more we fold points to, to their suspected neighbor, the more. It's also important not to fold all the way like I just did. I just fold it like all the way out, but it's not necessary. You see that that's the intersection, so that's where it's going to stop. See, let's see if this one hits actually any neighbors. Yeah, several intersections happening there, and you never know. Like you never know what kind of configuration you're getting until you do it. That's that's the way you do it. You got to do it. So I don't know about you guys, but I've been just watching a lot of things on YouTube. That's just sort of my life now. Like just folding, uh, doing presentations for workshops and developing new exercises for workshops, coming up with new designs, working on art pieces, and YouTube, that's life.
and I started, I went into this hole of watching Gordon Ramsay videos. Like I knew about Gordon Ramsay, I knew like he was crazy and I watched that meme of him going like, it's raw and all that, like the lamb, the lamb sauce and all that from Hell's Kitchen. But then I started watching like the Kitchen Nightmares thing and I don't know why it's so addictive to watch like these arrogant people just get into all sorts of trouble because of their blindness. Like they're so blind to their own mistakes that they, they don't even realize, right? I don't know, it's, it's like a guilty pleasure, I suppose. So yeah, point to point to point to point. If you're not sure, you can always sort of unfold and, and also, you, you know, just be, be sure to be sure. Also, you can hold it up to the light. And that way you can sort of be certain, a little more assertive there. Let's see, let's see. That's done, that's done. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, all right. This one seems to be missing there, yeah. Beautiful, the intersections, the way they line up, it's always just, mm. I could use a ruler for this part, but no, we're not going to. We're just gonna sort of go with tracing these. I'm, try I'm gonna try and not move it too much. I'm gonna try. Go there, go there. Now notice this line here at the end. This is very interesting. It sort of happens at the edges mostly. But what happens is that this sort of, we don't just go this one completely out, but rather since it's these two cells, it's actually, these are neighbors now. So they are actually going to be what completes it. It's very interesting because if we try to put a line between, the line would not go through the, the corresponding um, Voronoi line. Unlike this one, because there's no other neighbor that's just going to go straight all the way. Yeah. And also go straight all the way. This one goes up right there. Yeah, a little bit there, a little mistake. And whoop. That one touches there. This one goes all the way. Hits here and goes all the way. Again, these two are now neighbors, and it is this one but it's not the same line as this. This actually is changing directions. And that pretty much does it. So those are the Voronoi cells for these sets of points. So these sets of points will give us this Voronoi cell configuration. So the reason why this works with folding is that if we can imagine a line, I'm actually gonna use a ruler for this. So we can imagine a line between these two points. We have then here a right angle. And the same for all of them. And we can actually trace, I have this other example from last take, where I actually trace the dual of these sets of points. And I see that there again, I did the right angle thing. So for instance, we have this one, this interesting case where the line is sort of not touching the Bornoi line which corresponds to it, but that would be this line. Right at the midpoint, a right angle. Unlike these, that actually the line goes through the cell line. So very interesting little tidbit of information. If we had more points, of course, then it would shift and change. And so you can imagine this sort of as the dual of the, of the, of the points and sort of the, the, the dual pattern. Actually, I'm missing a line here. I missed this line. I'm just gonna go ahead and trace that. And notice, there we go. Oh, another one. Can't believe I missed these. Did I miss another? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I did. Damn it. There we go. So this would be like the dual of the pattern. You can see all these right angles, very beautiful arrangement. Right angle, right angle. 
right? The midpoint. So we can imagine this, and when we put two points together, we're following the perpendicular bisector. So it's the perpendicular line at the midpoint of those points. So it's exactly the conditions necessary to construct Voronoi. So, you know, Voronoi and folding apparently have this very interesting relationship. They're very close. And I had this idea, if you want to try it, you know, go ahead, it's a lot of work. But if you had like a software where you like Illustrator or something, and you were to put points and then sort of print sort of them moving and sort of print different shapes of these points moving and did this process of folding points together and then held them on their camera and just took many pictures of them, you could actually animate the thing. So you could watch the points move and you could watch the different lines sort of fold and, have, and sort of the Bornoi moves. So it would be a manual way of constructing an, a Bornoi cell animation. So I think it's a nifty idea. If you want to try, you should go ahead. Now you know how to fold the Bornoi cells. So it's a great tool, again, to teach kids or people about the Bornoi cells and the intricate sort of um, arrangement they can produce. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a lot of fun. I hope you learned a little bit of something here. And yeah, so I'll catch you in the next one. Hope you have a fantastic, majestic uh, rest of your week. And, you know, be sure to join us on Patreon. If you want to support the channel, you want to support whatever it is we're doing. And, you know, all the best to you. And be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that YouTube nonsense, whatever, if you want to. And yeah, be sure to, you know, keep it light, keep it fun. Follow your instincts, follow your gut. Yeah, that's my advice. <laughs> yeah, that's not my advice. That's ancient advice. But anyway, take it easy now. Bye-bye.